Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another conversation about the serpent marriage. Now, this conversation is morphed into more about marriage in general. So we know that the father does not have to honor any serpent marriage or any agreements made within their temple walls. But he has a basic atomic marriage, which is between a man, husband, and, and a wife, which we discussed. And then he has extra rules for those who are his, which is of Yashara and the grafted in. So we discussed those things in the fourth video. I want to add something else, which came to my attention, brothers and sisters, um, in which I just recently learned as well. Um, just laying down and having sex with the woman doesn't uh, bind you legally in marriage. There has to be an agreement made between both of you and a contract to constitute a marriage. Other than that, that's fornication, brothers and sisters. It's just pure fornication. You see, when you think back, uh, when Adam and Eve first left the garden after they sinned, and they start having children, and those children start having children, they started to fornicate with one another. And uh, there is a such thing when people would stop marrying and giving in marriage, which means they're just fooling around and having sex. So I want to make that correction, brothers and sisters. Am I ever learning? As I'm ever learning, brothers and sisters, just like you are. And that's why I'm having this conversation with everyone and not just put together some lesson to teach so I would end up teaching you wrong or something like that. But when we're dealing with conversations, that just means we're talking. Whether you add to the conversation or not, or whether you think about it or not. Uh, but I want to share my thoughts with y'all. And that's what they are. Thoughts and communication with my subscribers and whoever else sees, sees this video. So we covered basically three things. The serpent marriage and agreements with all these other so-called mighty ones in their temples. We know the Most High doesn't have nothing to do with idol worship and their contracts. So we know that's a given right there. No, he will not honor those things when you come together uh, underneath in agreement with those type of entities, but he will honor the agreement between both of you to come together to marry. He will honor that. He will honor your agreement with that woman to come together and the father and the mother and the family witnesses and everything there. Uh, seeing the binding of two people come together. Yes, he will honor that, but he won't honor Anything, any contracts made with the serpent, okay? Because that means he'll have to honor the other contracts we made with the serpent. But he came to set us free from those things. He came to open the prison houses and set, and, and, and uh, let us out and unbind those contracts. And just like I uh, recommended in the last video, and the fourth conversation about the serpent marriage, uh... I recommend that y'all redo these particular marriages underneath his name and underneath his son. Get you some new witnesses and bind those contracts the right way. He wants you to do them underneath him, not underneath some other entity. But I did want to come on here and mention that brothers and sisters. So yes, um, if you lie down with multiple partners, that was just you having sex, having fornication. If you lie down with the first person, you, your first love and all of that, that was just you fornicating. The right thing to do was immediately get married the way the father told you to get married. You're supposed to bring money to the father. If he said yes, then the contract was rolled up. Y'all were married. If he said no, you had to... 
uh, you have to give the father the diary of, they, they call it something like di- diary of the daughters, the daughter, because he humbled her. He humbled her. That means he took away the virginity and the sealing of the blood contract. Y'all see that? So, um, yeah. Yeah. But this is um, the Most High is expanding all of this and he's putting it together so that when the time comes, when I do do a full lesson, we'll have the full understanding of these different aspects of marrying and giving in marriage. So, yes, brothers and sisters, you can be married and considered a married couple if you come in agreement with that person, say, marry me and she says yes all you need now is the father's permission and the contract to be signed which many have done and um that was the reason why we still respected other other uh, people's marriages even if it was underneath their deity or or their king married them, we still respected that union together and them coming together, having a family and children and all that. We didn't just come and say, oh, y'all not married anyway. I'm breaking this up. Give me, give me your woman. She shall be mine now. No, there is a basic atomic marriage that is to be honored and respected in all nations. But it's just a little different, y'all, Shiraz. Since we've been set apart as his personal heritage, we have to be clean and they have to be clean. That's why he told us to marry amongst each other. Touch not the unclean thing because you belong to the Father. It's different now that you are his possession. You are his wife. You are Kodesh set apart for himself. And you will be clean before him. But if you go out and get the unclean thing, he's not even going to recognize what you just did, Zion. This is the difference between us and them. So when we go out and take Moabites and Medanites of our own choosing, and they are unclean, he's not going to recognize it. He's going to tell you to put them away because he has the power to put them away, even if you married them. If the father say, put them away because you are my clean thing. I don't want you to touch that unclean thing. You have to put them away. And we see an example of that with Abraham and Ishmael, as I told in the other videos. Where Abraham had the power to put Ishmael's first wife away. Even though Ishmael married him. Married her. In an agreement together. And they had children. Abraham, the father, came and saw that that was an unclean woman. He told his son to put her away. Guess what the son did? The son obeyed and put her away. Then he got him a clean wife. The, the father came over there and saw that clean wife and said, keep this one. And guess what he did? He kept that one. Then he left and visited Abraham with that clean wife. So the father has a lot of power over uh, his children and uh, we also need to return back to those ways because the father was the one mainly who went out and sought a wife for his son the son didn't go out there and choose the father was underneath the guidance and direction of the heavenly father above to lead him to find his son a wife and guess what that's what took place brothers and sisters that's what took place. And there are multiple different types of marriages out here. But if it's done underneath the Most High, uh, the Most High will personally protect your marriage. And he will put within each one of us. He will put within each one of us what we need to be joined onto one another. And for him to be the head and for her to be the helpmeet. And as one unit, 
they would work together just like the Most High is our head. Yasharal is his help me. And together as a unit, we bring the word, the living word, uh, not only within ourselves, but amongst each other, brothers and sisters. So, in this world, yes, you do get married. You can be married. Now, is he going to honor the deity that's being placed over it? No. Kick that out. He's not going to honor all that stuff. He'll be breaking one of his own commandments, right? So, no, he's not going to honor that. He's going to honor the agreement made between these two that said, okay, I'm going to, I want to marry you. So, let's just say you got married before. You had a couple of marriages before in your lifetime. The first marriage, y'all had an agreement. You came together. That was a marriage. Things didn't work out, right? Hashitan, the one that you made agreement with in that temple, came and tore your marriage apart, right? You didn't know no better, right? So you get married again. It's the same story. This time you married a Gentile. And that one there happened to be around when you woke up and you realized that you married an unclean thing because this one here don't want to have nothing to do with Yahweh or Yahusha. They want their traditions. They want their and they're acting out and they're, well, the Most High may come and tell you to put that woman away or put that husband away. Because guess what? He has the authority to do so. Because he's the father over Yasharal, His wife, his sons and daughters are Yasharal, brothers and sisters. If he tells you to put them away, put them away because they're unclean. You have been lifted up above all peoples on the earth because you are tied directly to him and you're supposed to be clean. And now that he's lifting us out of the ways of the Gentiles and he's cleansing us and he's purging us, these things are happening amongst us. So, yes, um, this marriage subject it's going to be a continued topic. And I do want to know your thoughts about all of this, brothers and sisters. Everything. If you haven't seen the first four conversations, please go watch them. Then come back to this one. And, and then type up your full opinion and your full thoughts and whatever scriptures you want to post as well. Because we know that the Father heads put in the way. But there are other criteria that you got to understand to get a full understanding of what he's talking about. Because he would instantly tell you to put a Moabite or a Medianite away. Put that unclean thing away. Regardless if you married it. Him or her. But if it's an unclean thing in his eyes, you have no power after that. His power and control takes over and his authority, his headship is the final authority. And that's that's. That's the same authority the man has over the woman. And so if, if the, the husband seem, deems that he, uh, the wife isn't fit, then he has the power to put her away. But the woman doesn't have the power to put the man away. And this is where, where the father comes in and where the father would take headship. If she's fresh and brand new and awakened, Hebrew as well, and, he, and she realized she's with the unclean thing, the father may have you put the unclean thing away too. Because he is in authority. Brothers and sisters. In authority. Okay. So. Y'all bear with me. Work with me on this, this particular subject. The conversation goes on. And I'm put together a good video concerning all of this. All right, with that, I'm going to say shalom, and thank y'all for tuning in. Put your thoughts in the comment section and scriptures as well. Thank you.